start here. And by the definition of what this notation means, we'll keep coming back to that, keep coming back to that, keep coming back to that. Um, whenever you ask me a question about exponents, I'll always come back to that. Right? So what does it mean? Four to the, well, how do we even say it? Four to the fifth power. Four to the fifth power. Four to the power of five. Um, yep, that's pretty. Four to the fifth, maybe, without saying the word power. So that's our power. Might as well call it the power. And this is called the base. All right. So what does it mean? You know how to say it? What does it mean? Right. Four is being multiplied by itself five times. Okay. Four times four times four times four. Five factors of four. Let's come over here. Square times x to the third. From your experience, from your me memory, maybe a vague, distant memory, maybe a fresh, uh, vivid memory, when you multiply x squared times x to the third, you should be able to combine them together. What is the new thing? Minus. x to the fifth power. x to the fifth power. OK? Whoa, who's this guy? Hey. Welcome, new student. How are you? New guy. What's your name? Um, my name's Keenan. Oh, this is Keenan, everybody. I'm a new student from uh, Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Uh, is it cold there? Uh, yeah, I felt like it was here. Just more frequent. Your English is very good. Yeah, oh, it's very well. My brother lives here. Or something. <laughs> oh, so. oh, I know a guy who's a lot. He's got a long hair, though. Yeah, good looking guy. <laughs> just a little uglier. Right. <laughs> you like him just a little uglier. Uh, okay, so x to the fifth. Who thinks x to the sixth? Everybody thinking x to the sixth? People a little tempted to say x to the sixth? Okay, how do you know it's x to the fifth? How are you so sure? It's 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay. 2 times 3 is 6. So it's x to the sixth. Because 2 times 3 is 6. No. No, 2 plus 3 is 5 is not a reason for it being x to the fifth. Yes? Because we don't know what the uh, the base is, and so let's say if we did n plus 1 and stuff, it's just going to be the same number. So I might as well keep it x, and then mm -hmm. just add the x1. The power. Okay, good. The base, the base, we know what the base is. The base is x. Okay, we don't, we, it can stand for any number. Yeah. Um, I guess what I'm saying is, if you felt like x to the sixth was it, you're not alone. Lots and lots of people feel like it's x to the sixth because they're forgetting. They're relying on their memory. Your memory is terrible. Do not rely on memories. Okay. Um, why is it x to the fifth and not x to the sixth? Can we justify this being x to the fifth? Somehow? Yeah. If, if you were right now, it'd be x times x times x times x. Excellent. If you wrote it out, going back to the definition of what it means to write something to a power, powers, exponents, are just a shorthand. They're just a way of saying, I'm going to multiply this many factors of this base. Okay. I'm going to multiply two factors of x. I'm going to multiply three factors of x. And if I multiply two factors of x by three factors of x, I multiply five factors of x. Okay. So the shorthand would be, that's how many factors of x there are. There are two of them, then there are three of them, there's two plus three of them. So what would m to the fourth times m to the fifth be? Don't be shy. Yeah, to the ninth. M to the ninth. M to the ninth. We got four of them here, m times m times m times m times m times five. More m's, that's a total of nine m's that we're going to multiply together. That's why it's four plus five. Not because I remember it that way, not because I learned it that, you know, I learned it in Selvig, or I learned it in Parsons class, or I learned it at the other school in Uzbekistan, whatever. Like, it's not because I remember it that way, it's because what you're asking me to do here is multiply nine factors of m together. And that, the shorthand for that would be m to the ninth. Okay. Uh, are the 
minus 6 over r of 2 is 4. Anybody know what that would be? Can we combine what the new expression would be? Yeah. R to the second. R to the second. Right. How can we justify that? How so? Um, well, if there's 6 r's up there. 6 r's. So let's write 6 r's. There's six R's. And there's four R's on the bottom. Four factors of R down here. Okay. Yeah, you'd have two R's left. So have two R's, R's left. left. If we were to uh, move this over a bit, give ourselves some room. So we've got six factors of R over four factors of R. Okay. So we could really write this as the product of a bunch of fractions. Here are the bunch of fractions right here. We got r over r. We can take this r over that r uh, times this r over that r times r over r times r over r. Well, so, so far we have r to the fourth over r to the fourth. Okay. The reason why we can do that is because when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. Okay. Well, we got two more factors of r up here times r times r again, r over one. Because it looks like we've run out of factors of r in the denominator. We've got r times itself uh, six times, but four of those are just getting divided by a factor of r. It's coupled up with it. What's r divided by r? One. One. Anything divided by itself is one. So we've got one times one times one times one times r times r. So we're left with r squared over one. R squared. So if you multiply two things together that have the same base, the same base, x is the base, they have the same base, just multiply five of those together. We can add their exponents. If you multiply them together, you can add their exponents. So if we divide, or we make the observation that we could do what with their exponents? Six minus four is two. We got six factors up here, but each one of those gets picked off by one of those. There's four of them, four less than there were, so we get r squared. Quickly wanted to spit out what the new q would be q to the what? To the fifth. We got eight factors of q here, three factors here. Three of these are going to cancel out three of these. If three of the eight get canceled out, which is 8 minus 3 is 5. Now down here, y squared, and that y squared is raised to the third. Anybody know what the new exponent would be? Six. 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 Six y squared times y squared times y squared. That's what to the third means. It means multiply by itself three times. Okay? And each of those y squareds is just y times y. But there's one group. There's another one. There's another one. There's three groups, right? three parentheses that I've written here because there's a power of three. And in each of those parentheses is two factors of y for a total number of factors of six, six factors. We could do the same over here. Here is the y to the fourth, times the y to the fourth, and this gets both kind of multiply down here. Well, how many of these do we have? How many parentheses do we have? Seven. Seven, we're multiplying it by itself seven times, basically seven. Okay. And in each of those seven parentheses, what do we have? Four. Four factors of y. We've got seven groups of four factors of y. We've got four 
four, 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 seven groups of four. So how many factors of y is that all together? 28. Four times seven. Product of powers. powers. We got a, a product because we're multiplying together. We got a couple of different powers. So we see that the power is in the end. Here we have a uh, quotient of powers. And here we have a power of powers. I don't expect you to memorize those. I just expect you to understand. If you multiply m to the fourth times m to the fifth, you're just multiplying nine n's together, so m to the ninth. And if you want to take that step of saying, well, anytime I multiply two of the same bases, and you just add their exponents, that'll be great. Make that shortcut, save yourself a little time. Um, try not to get tripped up, though. Don't, don't mistakenly multiply these together. Don't mistakenly add these together. If in doubt, write it out a long way and see how many factors you have. Remind yourself, oh, that's right, I would multiply 4 times 7 because there's 7 groups of 4 factors of y. So now we're going to use those properties to explain a couple of other properties. Like number to the zero power is one. Some number, any number except for zero, this doesn't work with zero, so it can't be zero to the zero. But any other number, one, two, three, four, five, negative five, negative twelve, anything, to the zero power is one. Okay? Why? Why is something to the zero power one? I can kind of get why two squared is four, two to the third is eight, that makes sense. Uh, you know, he's like said two to the first is two, because I just have one factor of two. But uh, here, if, if I had two to the zero, zero factors of two, how is that one? How is it not zero, or just a big hole in the ground? Why is it one? Can anybody justify this being one? So, like, if it was x squared times 1, it's there's still a 1 in front of it. Like, there's a 1 in front of everything. Okay. There's so, a 1 in front of the x squared? Yeah. Okay. So, then, if you don't have any x's, there's still the 1 in front of it. If I don't have any x's, there's still the 1 in front of it. Um, okay. So like, so one x squared is really one times x times x. Yeah. And one times x to the first is one times x. And then if we just keep taking away x's, there's still that factor of yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. It's not bad. Kind of the, the noticing of a pattern. Okay. So I get how if it's to the zero power, how it's not just itself or zero. So like a to the zero power, why isn't that just a? Or if it's a zero power, why isn't it a zero? Well, why isn't it a or why isn't it zero? Why isn't it one of those? Yeah. That's a good question. So this pattern kind of, I don't know, makes you feel a little better. Like x to the third is one times x times x times x. If that's x to the third, and then we're gonna take away x's until we have no factors of x, and then we're just left with that one in front. It's not incredibly rigorous, like mathematically rigorous. Um, and neither is, I mean, my example is not going to be completely rigorous, but it's going to be a little bit more than this. But I like that. We, like we have these zero factors of x. We're left with that one in front. It's always a factor of one. Okay, I like that. 
most often people don't immediately feel comfortable with something to the zero power being one. It seems strange. Okay. So let's start with uh, let's start with two to the zero equals one, and we'll start with two to the fifth. Okay. Uh, <coughs> two to the fifth is just two times itself, five times, that'll be thirty-two. So we'll take 2 to the 5th over 2. 2 to the 5th to the divided by 2. That comes out to be 2 to the what power? 4. 2 to the 4. Two to the four. Which makes sense. We've got 5 factors of 2 here. we got 1 factor of 2 here. We can multiply all these factors of 2 here uh, together and divide that number by 2. And it's eliminated the factor of 2. 2 to the 5th over 2 squared. Two to the what? Three. Two, to the right. two of these factors cancel out two of these factors. You're left with three factors here in the numerator. Two to the fifth over, we'll jump all the way up to two to the fourth. And two to the what? One. Two to the one, because we're doing five minus four is one. Four factors get canceled out, leaving factor one factor of two. So now we get two to the fifth over two to the fifth. That's 2 to the what? Zero. 2 to the 0. 2 to the 5 minus 5. Here we have 2 to the 5 minus 1 is 4. 5 minus 2 is 3. 5 minus 4 is 1. 5 minus 5 is 0. Okay, so we got 2 to the 0. But what is 2 to the 5th is just 32. 2 to the 5th is 32. What's 32 divided by 32? It's 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. Think about it, I could, I could write a to the zero as a to the fifth over a to the fifth, which is a to the zero, which would also have to be one, because a to the fifth divided by a to the fifth would have to be one. Do the a to the sixth over a to the sixth, a to the whatever, the a to the whatever. Okay. Just as a means of making ourselves feel comfortable with the fact that a to the zero is one. Weird, but that's definitely the way it is. Okay. And the real, true, not joking around answer here is a to the zero is one because a to the zero has to be one. If a to the zero weren't one, then let's say a to the zero was equal to a. And then we came across this situation. We try to do a to the fifth divided by a to the fifth. And then we say a to the zero is a. Well, that can't be a. This is one. So for this exponential notation and all this kind of stuff, multiplication and addition and everything, for everything to work out the way it does in uh, a to the zero has to be one. And sometimes we can't justify it like when we divide by zero. There's not, you know, divided by zero just can't be done. There's no definition for it. It breaks math. Okay? So we can't divide by zero, but raising something to the zero doesn't break math. It's all right. Um, you can kind of see here why a can't be zero, because then we'd be dividing by zero, and that's not defined. Anything to the zero is one, and there's um, maybe a little bit of a helpful way to see why that is. Now we're going to see, um, unless there's any questions, any questions so far? You feel good about a is zero is one? Because the zero is one and not a and not zero. Okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about negative exponents. What, what of negative exponents? Like, I, I imagine uh, one day this guy was writing a times a times a times a a bunch of times and got tired of it and was like, I'm just going to write a little number up here at the top and say a to the seventh. That means I'm multiplied a, a, a times itself seven times. And somebody said, well, what does it mean a to the zero? So we had to, you know, Johnny Exponent had to look into it. Like, what, is, what would something to the zero be? And then somebody else asks, what would it mean if you raised it to a negative power? So we have to look into that. Okay. So we'll keep going with this pattern, this line of thought, and see what that gets us. So we'll take a to the fifth over a to the sixth. What power would that be? a to the negative one. We take five minus six. Um, but we could look at it a little differently. We could just write it out. A to the fifth, or sorry, a to the fifth means a 
times a times a times a times a over a times a times a times a times a times a. Well, as we looked at before, like each one of these could become their own little fraction, and a divided by a would be one. One times one times one times one times one. Now there's one a left, but where is it? In the denominator. It's in the denominator. So this comes out to be one over. Or a to the negative one. Okay. So a negative exponent looks like maybe it's like this is actually in the denominator. That's what that means. How about a to the fifth over a to the seventh? A negative two. A to the negative two. Or we could write out five factors of a, seven factors of a. Five of those factors cancel out, and we're just left with one over a. The second two factors are left in the denominator. What would a to the negative 3 be? 1 a to the 5 to a 3. 1 over a to the 3rd. a to the negative m. 1 over a to the m. 1 over a to the positive m. Whatever that negative number is, we can just write it in the denominator. Product of two powers, we add them together. The quotient of two powers, we subtract them. Uh, power raised to a power, we multiply them. Something raised to the zero power is one. A to the negative power is one over a to that positive power. Tyler, when we do that on um, questions stuff like that, like more homework, uh -huh. do we have to put both of those at a negative one equals one a m? Uh, if you come out with um, you get all done with simplifying, and you come up with x to the negative 3, most of the time we'll write that as 1 over x to the third. Or at least have a working knowledge that that is what x to the negative 3 means. Okay. Typically, though, we do want to write it as a positive exponent. So we'll write it in the denominator instead of the numerator. Okay? So x to the negative 3 over 1 is 1 over x to the One other thing about negative exponents. So a to the negative m is 1 over a to the m. What about if I have 1 over a to the negative? I'll use n just to avoid any confusion. What if the negative is in the denominator? I'm going to replace it. we have a to the negative n, which from here we know is 1 over a to the positive n. You multiply 1 by the reciprocal, so 1 over a to the n, that's a to the n over 1, that's a to the n. And if we had something like a to the second times y to the negative 3 over b to the negative 2, times x squared. I get this negative exponents wrapped up in all this other uh, stuff, positive exponents. What do we do with them? Um, I'll go quickly. a squared times, well, we know y to the negative 3 is 1 over y to the third. Okay. And b to the negative 2, we know is 1 over b squared. Because we don't like all this fractions and fractions, so we'll work with that. We get a squared over y to the third over, so it'd be x squared over b squared. We're dividing a fraction by a fraction, so we'll multiply by the reciprocal, so we get a squared over y to the third times b squared over x squared times a squared b squared over y to the third x. So if we look at from the, the first step to the last, does it seem like there's some quick shortcut to handling those negative exponents? Or does it look like we did? If the negative's on the bottom, it goes to the top as a positive number, and right. vice versa. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if 
it's in the numerator, you can move down to the denominator, and if it's in the denominator, you can move it to the numerator. All right. So, it's got a lot of information. Let's see if we can um, put it together. So you can just read it from off the board here. I want you to uh, simplify this expression. So what we want is to have positive exponents and um, combine things together if possible. Okay. Uh, so we look back at what we just talked about. We talked about negative exponents. <coughs> and now. A number raised to a negative exponent is actually the same as 1 over that same number to a positive exponent. And 1 over uh, something to a negative exponent will be the same as bringing it up into the numerator. So, uh, and we talked about how if you have, say, y to the negative 3, you can just uh, shortcut bring it down into the denominator. And if you had uh, b to the negative 2, shortcut, you're going to bring it up into the numerator. So, what's a step we can take to simplify this expression? Yeah, take the shortcut and uh, shortcut, make it uh, y1 uh, uh, to the power and uh, y to the uh, to the y squared. And then uh, you can leave the sign x to the paragon squared. x squared? This guy is now in the denominator. It's a positive power. This is in the numerator. Whoops, got that one. In the numerator as a positive power. Now these have the same base. This is y times y times y, <coughs> which is y to the third. third. And same for x, x to the third. Why the third of x? The third we're going to use this and uh, talk about another property of exponents. Not one that we have to memorize, not even one that's that surprising. Okay, so I don't want you to, to memorize it, but I do want to acknowledge it and recognize it as something that's true. You can write it like this, you can write it like that. It's the same thing, but that's not all that surprising if you think about it. Because let's say we take y over x to the third, okay? Um, what does it mean to raise this to the third power? Well, it's all three times. That's itself three times, so y over x times y over x times y over x. That is the thing. It's getting multiplied by itself three times. So we could interpret that as one thing, y over x times itself three times, so it's that thing in parentheses raised to the third. Or we can multiply these fractions together. Y times y times y is y to the third. X times x times x is x to the third. And we could go the other way too. We could say, well, this is these three fractions multiplied together. Y times y times y. X times x times x. And we could write it as y over x to the third. So one number divided by another raised to a power, the same as a to that power over b. Same thing for x times y to the third. That's just x times y times x times y times x times y, which we just multiply the x's together and get x to the third. We multiply the y's together and get y to the third. So a times b to whatever power, to a to that power times b. This one, with this one, a to the zero is one. Um, negative exponents. Uh, 
adding exponents together, multiplying exponents together, subtracting exponents. All of these are all the properties of exponents. Let's use them again, and we'll try and simplify another expression. and about lots of different kinds of problems that you can have, uh, whether it be simplifying or solving an equation or whatever, is taking too many steps at one time. Um, so let's try and use one property at a time. So what I mean by that is don't try and jump to two to the whatever power it is. Let's justify that by taking one step at a time. So, the property can be used here. Yeah, distributive. Okay, we can call it distributive. I don't like it because it can get confused with the distributive property. But there, there is this property that says if we have a product of things raised to a power, then each of those things we're multiplying together can get that power. So she gets 2 squared raised to the fifth times y to the third raised to the the fifth. Each of those things that are multiplying together gets raised to the fifth power. So now I have two squared to the fifth. How do I combine these? Ten. Make it ten. Why multiplying? Why not adding? Why not subtracting? Why not? Because if you wrote it out. Because if you wrote it out, you'd have five groups of two times itself twice. So you have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, you have it's 5 times, so a total of 10 factors of 2, 2 to the 10th, times y to the 15th, 15th, so that's 1,028, y to the 15th, is that right? 1,024. 24, yeah. That's the problem with relying on your memory. So I'll try my best not to call that the distributive. If I do, I'm going to call it the distributive property of exponents or something, but uh, the distributive property is really specific. Yeah, Tyler? How do you know 1024? 2 to the 10th? To all. 2 times 2 times oh, multiply 2 times itself. Yeah. Okay. If, do you guys know how to use your calculators to do numbers to powers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, just in case you don't. Here's an example here. So 2, and then most calculators will have this raised to the button, raised to the 10th power, 1024. Some will look like this, where you'll, you'll enter 2, and then you'll hit a button that's something like uh, x to the y, or y to the x, yeah. or a to the b, or something like that. So you'll press that. The screen will clear, you'll enter 10, you'll press enter, and then you'll get 2 to the 10. to 
to simplify this expression. Meaning we'd like to have things each with their own exponents, like not in parentheses, and, uh, and not have negative exponents. That would be nice too. All right. Now, the, the questions that I get when we get to something like this is, am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to do that? And as long as what you're doing is legal, I'll say, yeah, sure, do that. There isn't any one thing that you're supposed to do and something else you're not supposed to do. If both ways get you to that answer, um, and it's not just guessing and it's not just luck, that's the way you should do it. Um, so we'll do it a, a few different ways. And one way that I've seen a lot of is each one of these things gets a power of negative three, but one thing that gets forgotten is that Everything that's getting multiplied together in the parentheses gets an exponent of negative 3, which includes 5. 5 gets its own exponent. People tend to forget this is 5 to the first power, and so it's its own thing. Here's this, this guy right here. Here's another factor that gets an exponent of negative 3. So 5 to the first to the negative 3 times s to the negative 2 to the negative 3 times t to the fourth to the negative three. So this would be five to the negative three. This would be s to the sixth. If we multiply those together, and t to the negative 12. Where should we go from here? done that, right? Yeah. We haven't really taken 5 to the negative 3 or 2 to the negative 2, or how do we deal with negative exponents? We only really discussed one way to deal with negative exponents. Just to move down to the denominator, so we got s to the 6th over 5 to the positive 3 times t to the positive 12. <coughs> s to the 6th, what's 5 to the 3rd? Like there's S is only there, T is only there, there's a constant. If there were S is somewhere else or T is somewhere else, you'd be trying to put them together, right? They have the same base. But we don't. So that's it. That's all done. Any questions? Okay. So we're going to jump from 5.1 to 5.3. Another time. To me, the, the move from 5.1 to 5.3 is, um, it makes a lot more sense. Now, if we were to go back to the beginning of class, we added exponents here, right? Why did we add those exponents? Yes, if you write it out, that's what it adds up to because we're multiplying them all together. Let's go back down to the present slide. All right, now we have 5x squared, not times, but plus 3x squared. If we wrote it out, 5x squared means x squared plus x squared plus x squared plus x squared plus x squared. Okay. And 
three x squared means x squared plus x squared plus x squared. And we're adding them together. Okay, so we have x squared plus itself a bunch of times. How many times are we adding it together? Eight times. So eight what? Well, it's just an x squared, and there's two of them. There's three of them, four of them, five, six, seven, eight. X to the eighth would mean multiplying x by itself eight times, oh, okay. right? Not add it. So you just have eight groups of x squared. That's the definition of multiplication. If I have eight times something, it means I have eight groups of that thing. That thing is x squared. So we can combine those. Those are what we call like. Can we add 2x plus 5x to the third? No. No, we can't. So here we have x plus x plus x to the third 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 plus x to the third. To the third. Now we'd like to say there's eight somethings, right? We don't have eight groups of any one thing. Here we have eight groups of x squared, or sorry, seven, not eight, but uh, we don't have seven of any of the same thing. We have five of these, which is what this says, and two groups of these, which is what this says, and there's no way to put them together and say that there's seven of something. Same reason we can't, we, we need common denominators to put things together when we're adding fractions. Uh, they're just not like terms. So these are So here, all we want to do is combine like terms. It's not all possible. And I want you to give it your best shot. Follow your intuition. Combining like terms. So this said to add. Just start combining like terms, because if there was an addition right there, there'd be really no purpose to those parentheses being there. There's a negative in front, so before we start trying to push these like terms together, we gotta do what first? These ones? Yeah. This negative to positive, what about this positive? It's negative. We're gonna distribute the negative to everything. It's saying Minus this whole thing. If I'm going to minus this thing, then I'm going to minus every piece. X squared minus 3x plus, plus 5 plus 4x squared minus 8x minus 9. And these two are like terms. So x squared plus 4x squared is 5x squared. A negative 3x, and that is a like term with negative 8x, negative 11x, and 5 and negative 9 are both constants. 5 minus 9 is negative 4. I'll give you another one real similar to that. So we'll put these together, and then we'll, I just said the word polynomial. So we'll talk about what that word means. Okay? So what's the first thing we need to do? Distribute, Distribute that negative. All right, so we'll do that. A, B, and the fourth. This doesn't have a negative. If it did, we need to distribute it, but it doesn't. So that's fine. Minus 4. 
minus 3b cubed. Careful when you have a negative and a negative, remember that's a positive 12b squared minus 8b. Remember to distribute it to everything, not just the thing in front, otherwise why would the person have bothered to put parentheses there? Okay, so we got 8b to the fourth. I like when we get lots and lots of terms to make sure that I use all of the terms and I use them only once and I keep it all straight. Once I have written it down, cross it out, got it used. Okay. And that traditionally what we do next is move on to the next highest power. Okay. Next highest power. What's the next highest power? Negative three B cubed. Three is the next highest power. Here's the power right there. The third power. Minus three B cubed. It didn't have anything else to combine with. There's no like terms with it. So it's done. Uh, here we have squared, right? It's the next one would be two. So negative two b squared and 12 b squared plus 10 b squared. That's those like terms together. And negative eight b and a v, so that's minus seven v. Those out and minus one. Okay. But I'm gonna show you some polynomials. Big examples of polynomials are the easiest way to see what polynomials are. Okay. Here's one. Here's a polynomial. Here's another one. Okay. We put them together and we came up with another polynomial. And here's a polynomial. And here's a polynomial. Here's a couple more. There and there. Put them together. Got another polynomial. Okay. Think about it. Polynomials work just like any other number. If I take a number and I add a number, what do I get? A number. A number. high and lofty question there. You got a number plus a number is a number, a number plus a number, a number minus a number is a number, a number times a number is a number, a number divided by a number is a number. Okay. Um, I'm going to share something with you. Actually, a polynomial is a way that you can represent a number in any base. So let me show you what I mean. Let's take the number uh, 4,362. This is base 10, which means it takes like 10 in this position to move up to the next position, 10 in this position to move up to the next position, and so on. Okay, uh, well, this is 2 times 10 what power to the 1. This is 2, zero. 10 to the 0, actually. Right? 2 times 10 to the 0, 10 to the 0 is 1, 2 times 1. And this guy right here is 2 times 10 to the 1st. Right? Or sorry, 6, not, not 2. 6 times 10 to the 1st. This one is 3 times 10. This doesn't look like times. 10 to the second, 10 to the second is 100, 3 times 100, 300, 6 times 10, 60, 362. This one, 4 times 10 to the 3rd. We can just keep going on. 10 to the 4th, 10 to the 5th, 6th, 7th. So we can write this as. 4 times 10 to the 3rd plus 3 times 10 squared plus uh, 6 times 10 plus 2. The polynomial, the polynomial 4x cubed plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 2 when 10 is x. And now we could replace 10 with anything else, really. Um, it works best to use bases that are higher than 10. Um, any other base, right? That's what a base is. And you don't need to know that. It's not, a, it's not a big deal. But really, our number system is based on polynomials. Is the polynomial 4x cubed plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 2 when x is 10. If x were 11, it would be in base 11 wouldn't be the same number. Uh, base, we could make a base 12, base 13, and so on and so on. 
Um, so that's a, a little tidbit. That's how our base 10 number system works, like a polynomial board. So when we add polynomials, we're just add, it's kind of like we're adding together numbers in some mystery base. It's a base that we don't know, we can do it that way. Um, and we would just get numbers, new numbers in that same base. So we add polynomials, subtract them, multiply them. We're not going to divide them right now, but you could. Okay, we'll go up through multiplying. And you just get elements from that same set, the set of polynomials. You add two not polynomials together, and the set of polynomials, you get another polynomial. If you add them, you get another polynomial. Subtract them, you get another polynomial. Okay. So just uh, one more thing about polynomials in general. They're just these things that have multiple terms where each term looks like, say, a times a variable to some power. Okay. So this could be 5x to the 10th. This would be 12x to the third. Uh, these powers need to be positive powers. Okay. But these guys, these coefficients, can be negative. This could be negative 12x to the first. 15x to the negative, or sorry, negative 15x to the zero, okay? So it would be negative 15. So um, every term in a polynomial looks like this. It has that structure. The variable is here, and here we have a number, and there we have a number. There's our variable. Which means the variable is not in the exponent, that's a different kind of function. The variable is right here being raised to a power and being multiplied by a coefficient. Okay, and this number needs to be zero or positive. So I ask you if this is a polynomial, those are the criteria. And what does this word polynomial mean? Poly, more than one, multiple. Poly meaning many. Numbers. No meal meaning numbers. We can think of that as terms. Right? That's what we have. We have more than one number. There's one, there's another one, another one, another one, and another one. Polynomial. Okay. And we have uh, binomials and trinomials, which we have dealt with. Uh, uh, binomials. One last thing about polynomials, I think it's the last thing. Uh, this polynomial is of degree four. This one's also degree four. This one's degree three. What degree is this one? Two and this one? And this one? Also degree two. So the degree is the highest power that any of the variables have. That's the degree. So now we're going to be subtracting them. We certainly could add them. It would just mean we don't have to distribute a negative to start with. And uh, so we're going to move on to multiplying polynomials together. So if you've successfully untrained yourself to think that FOIL is the rule for multiplying any two parentheses together, then you shouldn't have any trouble. Just be using the distributive property to multiply these polynomials together. We'll start with... 21. We've already multiplied polynomials together. It's just that they were binomials. So now we're going to step it up. Multiply polynomials together. That was kind of like where we took a quadratic and we multiply the two factors together and wrote it in standard form. Multiplying two factors together in quadratic. That's multiplying polynomials, and here's multiplying polynomials with more nomials than just two. If it was just two terms, if we maybe forgot about that one, we would just do these two together, and then these two together, these two, and these two. The idea is the same, we just have more terms to distribute, distribute to. I'm going to start with this guy, distribute it to there. And to there, and to there. You can go the other way 
too. We can take this guy and distribute it to that number, to that number. It doesn't matter what order we do this in. But first, we'll distribute this 2a. So 2a times a squared is 2a to the third. 2a times negative 10a is negative 20a squared. And 2a times negative 2 is negative 4a. So we've used the distributed property with 2a, distributed it to everything into the second set of parentheses. So we take negative 3 and we distribute it. Negative 3a squared. Positive 30a plus 6. And like I said, it doesn't matter the order. If you had some other way of making sure that every possible pair of numbers got put together and multiplied, you would have done it. Okay. And usually the easiest thing for our American brains to do because we read from left to right is to work from left to right. So start with the most left thing, distribute it from left to right, and move on to the next thing, distribute it from left to right. You can go in some other order as long as you make sure every pair possible gets multiplied together. And you don't you know, multiply the same pair together twice, you don't want to do that, then we'll have done it correctly. So the highest power we see is the third. This is going to be a third degree polynomial. That one's done, like to cross it out, say that I'm done with it. Uh, here's the squared, there's another squared, that's it, just two of those, so minus 23a squared. Uh, a and a, so 30a minus 4a, 26a, those are done. And 6 is the only constant, so that's that. Make sure you distribute everything to everything else, combine like terms. sure we get every pair possible multiplied together. As easy as left to right. Start on the left, distribute this to the thing on the leftmost side of its parentheses. So 3d squared times negative d squared would be negative 3d to the fourth. Negative d squared times negative 7d would be a positive 7d. And negative d squared times positive 6 would be negative 6d squared. Negative d squared is done. This job is over. It's multiplied by everything else. Move on to 4d. 4d times 3d squared is 12d to the third. Minus 28d squared. Forget, we got this third thing to distribute, and if we get a fourth thing, we get that, and just keep going through until everything gets paired with everything else. So here we go, 3 times 3d squared is 9d squared. And 3 times negative 7d is negative 21d. 3 times 6 is 18. So you have three things here by three things here gives you nine terms that you're supposed to get here. Okay? So if we had three of them here and four of them here, we'd have 12 terms we're supposed to get. You can see the potential for getting a little lost. So I really do highly, highly recommend drawing actual curved lines, these arches, 
to connect each pair so you're sure that the pair got made and that it didn't get made twice. That every pair got made. Then we move on to the task of making sure we get all the like terms put together. So we got a d to the fourth, no other d to the fourth. So that one is a negative three d fourth, one of a kind. Third, there's another one, uh, no more. So we got two uh, third degrees to put together, so seven and 12. So 19 d to the third. Square, square, and another square. Let's see. Uh, what's that? Three square terms. We subtract uh, negative six, negative twenty, so negative tw negative thirty-four d squared plus nine d squared is negative twenty-five. Negative twenty-five d squared. Those. Are used up. Got D term and another D term. So 24D minus 21D. 3D. 3D. I like 3D. And that happens. Plus 18, the only constant there is. Might look kind of easy as I'm doing it up here. It is kind of easy if you make sure to keep track of it somehow. Keep track of it somehow. Okay. Got one. More concept here. <coughs> I just want you to be able to see it done and maybe get some chance to try it. Are we going down four? Huh? Are we going four now? No, you should be ready to do any number of, of, of terms in one times any number of terms in the other. If you have five here and five over here, you should get 25 terms and then be able to combine them. Okay. Well, now. Uh, Something else that we can do. So we can put any number of terms in two sets of parentheses, but what about three sets of parentheses, or four sets of parentheses, or five? And what do we do then? Well, first I'll ask you, what if we did two times three times five? How would you manage that multiplication of three numbers? Left to right. Left to right, so what would you do first? Two times three. Okay, so you, multiplication is what's called a binary operator. By meaning two, you can only operate two things together at once. So two times three is six. Then you multiply it by 5, and you get 30. Same thing for polynomials. You multiply two polynomials together at a time. It's the only way you can actually do it. Even if you try to make do 2 times 3 times 5 all at once, at some point you're going to have, you're going to collect two numbers together, and then you're going to put two numbers together again. Okay. So, <coughs> as in 28, we're going to multiply x plus We should multiply two together and then multiply the third one in. Multiply these two together, or multiply these two together, or multiply this one by that one, whichever you want, just like it wouldn't matter here. Two times three times five, three times five times two, two times five times three. It doesn't make a difference. So I like to multiply these together because that leaves a shorter but a smaller one to distribute in to the right. Doesn't matter though, I, this is just my preference. So we get x squared minus 11x plus 30. Okay. It's a couple of binomials, two factors of a quadratic. We've done that plenty of times. If negative 6x, negative 5x combines to negative 11x. We'll move on here. x times x squared, x to the third. x times negative 11x, negative 11x squared plus 30x. Move on to the 4, 4x squared, minus 44x, plus 120, x cubed, doesn't have any like terms, got a couple of x squareds here, so minus 7x squared, 30x and negative 44x, and negative 11x, uh, those are put together, plus 120. Multiply two together, multiply the third one. You can have a fourth one, multiply that fourth one and add that. And if we have a fourth one right now, we can multiply it in to this big one here. 
keeps going. Would it be negative 14? Wouldn't it? Yeah, would. Thank you. Okay. And this shouldn't be anything terribly new, but I do just want to remind you that if we see something like x plus 3 cubed, I didn't feel like I would get in trouble, I would scream at the top of my lungs and never write this as x cubed plus 3 cubed. Okay. You, want, you want to do that because, I don't know, I have no idea why you want to do it. Okay, it's just because you But it's, it's the same thing as, I don't know, I want to drive on the left side of the road. It's just, it doesn't fit with the construct of, of the rules of the road that we've all agreed to. We've all agreed that writing a 3 up here and the, a, a tiny three to the top right of something else means what? What's this three mean you're supposed to do? What are we going to practice is that's to the power of three. Yeah, that's the power of three, meaning this times itself three times. I mean, we just did this. You can see it came out a lot more complicated than x cubed plus three cubed. And there's definitely going to be more involved there. So. When you see an exponent, remember the exponent being multiplied this thing by itself that many times. Not just take this and give it that and give it that. So, right? That is all. Thank you very much.